1917, people, uh, photographic experts, were convinced that they could tell the difference between a fake and something real. And the Cottingley Fairies story demonstrated that they were wrong. What they were doing in their search for fakes was looking for the telltale signs of a negative having been tampered with. And that isn't how Elsie Griffiths and Francis did their fake. Their fake was done by cardboard cutouts in real life, uh, tweaked with little wires to move the wings. It was a brilliant piece of improvisation, uh, you know, sticky tape and plaster, and it was the sort of thing that I suppose Blue Peter would have been proud of. And it fooled generations. I remember having a book in the 1970s which had a dedicated an entire chapter to the Cottingley fairies, pointing out that they thought that fairies were unreal, but that there was no explanation so far as to how these pictures were faked. And it wasn't until, I think, 1983 that Elsie, uh, before she died, revealed the way that she and her friend had faked those photographs. And the deep fake quest to the uh, the quest to identify what is deep fake and what is real in today's news world um, is similarly based on technology that looks for glitches in the um, computer uh, record but those glitches don't necessarily need to exist so for so there are three ways of producing a deep a deep fake and I think it's a very interesting technique. I think it can be used indeed for satire and uh, to um, and for humour. But I can see very clearly how it could be used for something much more nefarious. So the first of the three ways is to modify the lips. And that's a matter of using a, uh, a piece of software that reproduces lip movement, synchronizes lip movement to the new words which you want to impose. Now that means there is always going to be a, uh, a mesh visible between the original footage and the new lips. More than that, the lip animation which is imported is almost certainly going to be based on generic speech patterns, uh, um, the, the, the generic, generic mouth patterns and in real life, most of us have our own idiosyncratic way of pronouncing words, and uh, that will not be picked up in this sort of basic deep fake. The second form of deep fake uh, is um, is exactly the same, but uh, uh, we would then look at the voice. And so far, I don't think there's any technology that would analyse the voice, the voice is used to um, to imitate the great and the good. So, for example, when Zelensky was deep faked by the Russian government, the fake is fairly obvious. First of all, because the mouth is moving in a way that uh, Zelensky's mouth doesn't quite move, and the voice is not strictly speaking Zelensky's. The third form of deep faking would be. Um, w would involve a serious outpouring of money and serious skill. And somebody with a background in computer animation probably could manage it. This would involve building a uh, 3D prototype of Zelensky from scans of Zelensky's face, for example, and then using motion capture, uh, facial motion capture, to uh, pick up an accurate recording of someone speaking the lines which are going to be imposed on Zelensky. Now, providing that person can do an adequate imitation, it would then, I think, be very difficult to identify that as a deep fake. But it would require not only a sizable amount of money, but a lot of skill. Now, at that point, I don't think glitches would be identifiable. Uh, presumably, the head would be imposed on the body using green screen techniques, and uh, this is something which is used in Hollywood at the moment. Uh, the first time I think it was used 
was not very effectively during Titanic when um, the two main characters were running through a corridor which was flooded. The two main characters were not running through the corridor. Stunt doubles were running through the corridor and their heads were superimposed. Not so well. But that technique of superimposing one head on another has got better and better and better. And using that technique. So, for example, um, the uh, Michael Crichton novel and then the subsequent film with Sean Connery, Rising Sun, looks at early problems with identifying deep fake. And it's, it was difficult at that point to identify what was a fake and what was not. It's significantly more difficult now if people invest the money. Now, what was extraordinary about the Zelensky fake was it was cheap and amateurish. I, I, I was surprised, actually, given the fact that a government was behind that lie. But I fear a government won't make the same mistake twice.